Oh yes, it's the Canon EOS RP. I don't have one in my hand, but I do know a man who does have one in his hands right now. His name is Locke. This video, it's not a review. It's not even a hands-on. Why? Well, I can't do hands-on when I don't actually have my hands-on with the product. That would be the worst hands-on ever. But look, I didn't even think I was going to make this video. I didn't think I was going to make a video about the Canon EOS RP. One of the reasons why I'm doing this is because Locke has got his hands on with it. So I've asked him a lot of questions. And also everybody has put in their opinion about this camera. So I thought, why not do it as well? Now, interestingly, there's not been too many hands-on videos released around the time of launch, quite bizarrely. This time, it's been quite a low-key affair. And for those who don't know what the RP is all about, it's cheap. That's probably what the RP stands for. Reasonably priced. And the budget for the press events were equally low. In the UK, they didn't even really have a press event. They just invited some retailers and some press to have a brief hands-on with the camera. In the US, the event was seemingly held at a graveyard, which is pretty unfortunate for a camera that almost spells RIP. Even more unfortunate, given the amount of criticism this camera has had. And just to repeat, Locke has had his hands on one. That's his weird double-jointed thumbs on it right now. DP review there. Frono's photo. Gorn Lane from Camera Labs has had his hands on with it. Ken Rockwell. Ken Rockwell. Kiddies, if you don't know who Ken Rockwell is, he's like the OG photography camera reviewer internet troll person with a porn star name. I mean, that is quite odd given that the EOS R event was held in Hawaii or some fancy exotic location like that where they'd basically spunk loads of cash on people to fly in just to see their new camera. This time, nothing. A graveyard! A gra dead people! Surrounded by dead people. Fantastic. But you know what? It's almost like they didn't want people to talk about their product. Or maybe they just knew what people were going to say about their product. Because everybody talked about it, even before it was official. And you know what? Some of my camera geek friends texted me at a time these leaks came out all excitedly saying, Oh wow, a cheap Canon, 4K, tilty, flippy screen, dual pixel AF, no 1.75 times crop. This could be the ultimate vlogging camera. In their imaginary world, waterfalls were flowing upwards, spoons were bending. Canon had changed their strategy from the EOS R, which was widely criticised for having an oldish sensor and a video feature that was just not up to scratch. That was four months, just four months ago. What do you think could happen in four months, hmm? Canon would just think, mm, you know what, we're bored of the EOS R, let's launch a new product that is cheaper, far cheaper, and has better video capabilities than the EOS R. No, four months, they would have been developed at exactly the same time under the same strategy slash plan. So what is the actual surprise this time round? And most of the criticism is based on an old 26 megapixel sensor within and a video feature that's not up to scratch. Does that sound familiar? I mean, a lot of the criticism is video based. It shoots 4K, no dual pixel AF in 4K, no AV or TV mode, 1.6 times crop, no C-Log. It doesn't have 24p in HD. Yes, yes, that's weird. But what's even weirder is that Locke is eating a plate. When you put the EFS lens on, you don't get HT. Internet people not happy. Lock eating plates. I think he's definitely enjoying it. Anyway, the weirdly crippled video feature. Nothing new. The EOS R had some weird quirks. It had 4K at 1.75 times crop. C log, no TV, AV, or auto ISO in C log mode. What's more, no 1080 with EF lenses and forced croppage. So, yes, the EOS RP has some weird quirks in video mode, to put it nicely, but that's just following in the same lines the EOS R, which had a hugely disappointing crippled video feature. It is sad, yes, shocking. Surprising? No. That's like saying, oh, that guy who's got incontinence, I'm really surprised that he pissed the bed again. Let me just re-emphasize, this has been announced just four months after the R, and this is $1,000 cheaper than the R. That's just like going to Burger King and complaining about it not tasting like a gourmet barbecue burger. Criticism of the EOS R's video, fair game. It costs a fair bit of money, but it would be delusional to think that Canon would give more for less money. For sure, for video gigs, it was never going to be any good. For Canon, it's par for the course. The whole EOS consumer camera that just happens to take really quite decent video, the sun has set on that a long time ago. Just let it go. Let it go. If I was Canon, I would completely omit the video feature. Painted silver says it's all retro and shit, and people accept that it doesn't have video. I would call it the RNP. Really not patronizing. 
Oh, but let's not forget, we're talking about a stills camera. What features has it got? It's got full frame. It's got five FPS. 88% um, AF coverage that way, 100% that way. Just got the spec sheet written up there. Handy. Um, it's 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 full frame. 2.36 million dot EVF. Not bad, not bad. Similar to the Sony. 6D Mark II sensor. Damn it, I should be focusing on the positive, shouldn't I? 29 different languages, which means it's multilingual. How many languages do you know, God damn it? It's clever. It's really clever. Smart. No, seriously, the biggest feature about the Canon EOS RP is that it's full frame. I, I think I've got to mention that. Oh yes, look at that in all its fullness, but image quality isn't going to be class leading. Dynamic range will be pans and it is pans. Those aren't actual pans, but what was that white detail they're supposed to be? And that big right wall thing, that's just all white. I mean, it's literally all white. It's bland, it's cheap, it's full frame, and that pretty much sums up the whole point of the EOS RP. And that's probably why Canon didn't build up too much hype about the camera. They didn't hold any fancy events in some exotic locations because you can just explain the camera in one tidy sentence like that. They didn't need people to review it because they know that this camera is going to sell well no matter what. And look, in some ways, there's nothing really offensive about a camera that has a full frame sensor and takes photos for a not too expensive price. But hold on just one moment. We're talking about how cheap this is and the body only is relatively cheap at $1,300. But when you get the 24 to 105 millimeter kit, that's $2,200. That is the problem. The cheapest R lens is a $500 macro lens. And the trouble is, if you want cheap, bland, full-frame cameras that are slightly outdated tech-wise, you've got that with Sony. The a7 II is still available at $1,000. And if you want the kit, the one with a 24 to 70, 28 to 70, quite a mediocre lens, $1,200. And if you can stretch your budget by a few more coins, you can go for the a7R2, which is what I'd do. And the thing is, with the Sony system, as all Sony fanboys will tell you, they've got lenses. Lots of lenses available. Pro lenses, but also cheap lenses. And then you have to make the choice of whether you want really bland full frame camera for a low price or a truly kick ass crop sensor camera like the X-T3 from Fujifilm or the Sony A6400, which have incredible autofocusing systems and burst. So to sum up, what is the actual point of the EOS RP? Well, it's full frame for less. And that's it. For some, they just want their cameras to have a decently sized sensor that simply takes photos. Some people like vanilla and the color beige. But look, it's all good if you like vanilla. This is an entry level full frame camera, sans lens. And it almost seems a bit silly to slag a camera off that could end up being someone's first camera, someone's first full frame to take photos and create with. I don't think someone who's getting started should be pointed away from a camera just because some video geek didn't get what they wanted or some photo nerd needs more dynamic range. It is what it is. And with entry level cameras, all that should be important is that you pick the camera that feels right in your hands and not what social media influencers have to say about a product that they haven't even handled themselves themselves. Oh, that includes me then, I guess. I don't think I'll be getting hands-on with the EOS RP, but I think I've said all that I want to say about it. For actual hands-on, go check out Locke's video, subscribe to my channel for more rants, hopefully some hands-on with stuff, and subscribe to Locke too. Please tickle that like button on the way out if you feel tickled too. Cheers!